So I've seen my fair share of friends, engineering friends, colleagues, go through the process of trying to find a remote job while being a remote, but while being a software engineer, front end developer, back end developer, full stack developer, right? I've seen them go through the process of building up their skill set, maybe doing some work from home days to get into the the feel of what it means to or what it feels like to work from home and even talk to a ton of people to understand their pros and cons around working from home or just being location independent. With that comes a job search process and I'm going to show you a few sites, three sites, that you can use if you're in search for a remote software engineer job. And when I say software engineer, to be clear, I'm inc being inclusive of full stack developer, back end, front end. Um, software engineer, like I said before, full stack software engineer. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. And you, you may have heard of these sites before, but these are the three sites that I've seen have the most results with people in either landing their first remote job as a software engineer or just switching jobs in the future after being in the field for a while. Um, I did want to add one small caveat. When you are applying to remote jobs, you want to ensure that you at least have some sort of work from home experience. It can be a very minimal, but as long as you're able to showcase that you have done it in the past, even if it was your job allowing you to work from home on a certain day when you were sick, or you had the possibility at your job to take a few work from home days, those are gonna be really important to mention in your cover letter or your resume. If you want more information about that, I will actually leave a link to Joshua Fluke on YouTube, he does really great videos around software engineer jobs, resumes, and how to apply to them. So in this video, I'll show you the three top sites and run you through how I would look for a remote job if um, if I was looking for a remote engineer role. So let's, let's, let's just go ahead and, and do the thing. So the first site we're gonna actually talk about today is weworkremotely.com. So all you gotta do, just go into your browser, type in weworkremotely.com. It should resolve to this page that you're seeing here. And on this page, they actually redid their site recently, which is really cool. Um, they have categories. So you can super quickly figure out what category you want to use to search for the job that you're looking for. For So for software engineering, we're actually going to click on where it says programming. So on this programming page, you're going to get a ton of jobs. As you can see, it was last updated 14 minutes ago. So that's pretty recent. The site actually uploads jobs pretty recently. Um, how it works is a company, if they're hiring, they will go to this job, post a job, pay a certain price. I think it's like $200, $300, and it'll keep the job on their site for about 30 days. So you'll see any, you'll see jobs on here that range from just being uploaded to maybe being 30 days um, since the, the first up, upload date. So if I'm looking for a software engineer role, I might want to dwindle that down to maybe my expertise. Um, I would only do this if, if you see yourself being in this specific expertise for the long run, right? Um, you could honestly just search for software engineer and just go off that. But usually when I'm searching for jobs, I want to make sure that I'm kind of tackling those jobs that fit in my expertise and my skill set first. So let's say I'm a front end developer or maybe um, a back end developer. So as you can see here, a lot of software engineer roles, which is great, and some of them actually even write in the actual um, language and framework that they're using. Um, but let's just keep scrolling here. As you can see, there's also front-end developer, so that might be one that I want to check out. All right, so let's look at this one. There's a senior software engineer role. And as you saw as I was scrolling through there, a lot of them have varying titles. Some say the exact language you have to know. Some are just engineering software engineer, some are software developer, full stack developer, um, contract developer. So just look out for those titles that you are most interested in. And I would honestly, if you are applying to a bunch of jobs, just click in and see what they're, see what they're looking for, see if it fits your description. Sometimes jobs don't really tell you everything just by the title. So you have to do a little bit of digging to see what skills they require and what languages they want you to know. And if there's any other hard hard requirements that you do have. So for this example, let's click on the senior software engineer at Legal Nature. And this is actually a view.js specific role. Um, so if I were you, I would go ahead and read a little bit about the company here. They're fully remote, it's cool, US and Europe. Um, so you will be working with people across time zones, which is something to note. And a little bit about what you'll do in your day to day, which is right here. Let's focus on 
really quickly the experience that you that they are looking for. Um, JavaScript view, maybe a little bit of experience with UX UI design, and these are all pluses. So it's really interesting because um, you don't necessarily have to meet all of these requirements. You can just meet these first three ones. Um, if passion for good UX design, I would just make sure that you have somewhere on your online profile or portfolio or maybe even your resume that you've maybe taken a course before, you've built some projects out um, where you really went really all in into the UX and UI of that design and that development. Um, and so yeah, I would, I think this is a really great one for example, um, but kind of just to show you my thinking around looking at these remote jobs. Um, sometimes these remote jobs will actually say you have to have remote experience. Some won't even mention it. Those are probably the ones where it doesn't really matter. Um, so really, you are able to pick and choose which you are most interested in applying in. So that's kind of how I use WeWork remotely. The second site that I wanted to mention on this uh, video here was um, remoteok.io. And this is actually a site um, created by Peter Levels and he has a huge following um, just around digital nomading, remote work. So I think not only follow the site, but also follow him as well. He has really great insights into um, remote work in general. So on this page, this is a, a page actually specific to remote dev jobs, as you can see up here in the browser, um, in the browser link. So this will be also linked in the description below for you. Um, as a software engineer looking for a software developer job, I essentially, this has a, a similar kind of business model as we work remotely where companies pay to be featured on here. Um, there's actually a tag that shows you what you're looking for. So I would just want to make sure I am um, searching for a dev job. And here it's broken up into the time. So this is actually all the jobs posted today and you can kind of go back in time yesterday, this week. Um, so I would do the same thing I did with We Work Remotely. Another really interesting thing that you can do on remoteok.io is actually you can click on different tags. So you can add these tags to your filter up here. Um, so if I wanted to specifically just search for full stack, I can do that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on full stack. It'll then go ahead and filter only by full stack jobs. So I can actually just pick any on here. There's actually a, quite a few, quite a few options to choose from. So let's ch check out full stack developer for card manager, which is interesting. Similar kind of stack from the last one I did. Uh, view JavaScript and on here again a little bit about the company and make sure you understand what the company is about just don't just apply to a job just because it's remote and that's what you want make sure you actually resonate and you actually want to work on a product that um, deals with this industry deals with a certain customer base similar to the last one gives you a ton of different requirements that they're looking for again if you don't meet all the requirements I would still say to apply it if you meet the majority of them um, they also want somebody who can dabble in design and product management, which is interesting, but that's a lot to do for one person. Um, but the one, the thing that I wanted to point out here for this specific one is something you should look out for again when you're applying to roles is that here they have some desirable qualifications. So this means that they are probably going to choose somebody who has this experience over somebody who doesn't. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so you will have some competition if this is your first remote full-time role. Um, so it says prior work with the remote team. Now this can be spent in a few different ways. It can be you literally have worked with a remote team because it's a full-time job and everybody's remote. You can also, if you have contracted in the past, you can use that as your remote work experience. So you have communicated and, and worked with and collaborated with um, teams that weren't next to you, right? Cause you're a contract worker. Maybe you were just doing it uh, for somebody overseas or somebody in a different time zone. Another way to do this is if you've built and shipped a product or collaborated with maybe um, a team that you met online and you guys all collaborated over a certain amount of period, a certain amount of months to launch a product to a group of users, that's another way to spin that. So a few ways to spin that remote work qualification. Um, it doesn't really necessarily mean that you have to have a full-time job as a remote worker for X amount of years. As long as you have done some work where you have tried to where you have worked with teams that are not physically in the same space as you, I would go ahead and count that as remote work. And the last site that I'm gonna mention here is uh, angel.co. And so a lot of these angel.co jobs are actually startups. Um, some of them are super new, super in the inception phase. Others have been around for a bit. And then there's others where they're usually not even paying their employees. It's all based on, I think, equity. Um, so 
make sure to read the fine lines. So if I was looking for jobs on angel.co, I would come up here to this little search bar. You can either search a keyword or what I usually do is that I click a role. So I'll choose a role. And again, here you can niche down on the exact role that you're looking for. You can also do all if you were just, you know, you didn't really care what you worked in, anything was fine. Um, location, you can do that. Remote, so you can do remote possible or mostly or fully remote, which is what we're looking for. Um, compensation company keywords. I kind of always leave those a little bit open-ended, but we'll start there. And as you can see here, 615 startups. So a really great place if you are still figuring out or don't have a ton of experience with remote work, this is a real good place to start as a lot of these startups, they are looking for somebody maybe a junior or mid-level who um, can really make a difference in their product. So they might not have needs to have remote work experience at the top of their their qualification list, right? So look at angel.co, use the steps that I use here. And let's just go ahead and, and let's just look through some of these jobs here. All right, so let's actually choose vidIQ. vidIQ is actually a company um, that helps YouTubers, essentially YouTube creators. Um, I use it, so I think it's really interesting they have a job posting on here. They're actually hiring for a front end engineer, remote. Let's look at what they have on here. Um, early opportunity, cutting edge software, transparency, remote team, profitable. So these are all really important things to know because you don't want to, you know, start a job and then you go under a few weeks later. Uh, so in the job description, let's, let's just take a, a quick little skim here. Let's see if there's anything that, that pops out at us. So one thing they say here is that um, they are remote and they want people that are self-motivated. So really important, if you can kind of, if you do get an interview with a company like this where they are mentioning specific characteristics in their job descriptions, make sure that you go really hard on, I do have these characteristics. I am self-motivated, I am autonomous, right? All these characteristics of a remote worker, you definitely wanna start mentioning those either in your resume, cover letter, introduction to the company um, and just in interviews in general. So what you'll do, sounds pretty standard, what they're looking for, then other things to know. So super important here, they're being pretty transparent with who and what, um, what type of person they're looking for, which is great, good for us. Um, so for the video queue, for as an example, they're actually a small remote team different time zones, lots of communication. So they want somebody who feels comfortable communicating across teams, across different time zones. So if you've done this before, and if you haven't done this before, it's fairly simple to at least do this a few times with maybe um, you know a few developers who just are spread across the US. Build a side project, a small side project with them. I really understand what it, what it means to just get up, work on a project with people who are not next to you, communicate, solve issues, um, squash blockers, all these different things. Get that kind of in your brain and pretty fresh, and that should help you with this job in specific. Um, they have a flexible remote schedule, but usually commit 40 hours a week, generous vacation. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty standard job description. Uh, and it obviously tells you the compensation over here on the right, the equity, and um, your skill set. So this is actually, I think, one of the better job descriptions I've seen throughout this whole video. So I would definitely check this out if you are looking for a front-end engineer role. And I'll also link it in the description as well. Um, they just seem like they have a really interesting, transparent culture. So I'd be interested in, in how um, the interview process goes for this, which is really cool. Those are three sites that I would recommend you to use if you are on the hunt for a remote job as a software engineer, whether you're full stack, backend, mobile, etc. Uh, these are three sites that I've used in the past and I know that other people have used them as well, so I definitely recommend them. And if you have any other sites that you used in the past that I didn't mention, make sure to leave them down in the comments. I'm always open to discovering new sites for jobs, but also you can help your peers and people in the comments um, during their job search as well. If you need any help with your your job search, check out the descriptions, the few links in there on how I can help you. And of course, make sure to subscribe for more, more videos around remote work in general and, and breaking into the tech scene. So see you all. Okay, bye.